celebrate this morning. And would you please stand and let us just be getting this time of worship in prayer. We are grateful, Lord, that you haven't given up on us. That you continue to extend this invitation to gather in this place and be about some radical news of the gracious love of God for people who don't deserve it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be grace. And so, Lord, it is that grace that gathers us this morning. And our prayer is that you will touch us and fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be more of the kinds of persons that you would have us be as blessed individuals in this community. May we worship you, Lord, in spirit and in this truth. Above all, amen. Please remain standing and let us sing together, Above All. Yeah. 
take your seat. Would you turn to some folks around you and just welcome them and greet them on this day? Hey, my girl, you're here. Hello, Lonnie. Mm. Good having you here. If you want to move up closer, okay. Good to see you. You're looking good. <laughs> hey, my man. Great to see you. Girl, good. give me a hug here. God bless. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, wait a minute. Gang, gang. Kathy, whoa! You're. <laughs> God bless you here. Hey, who won? We won. The good guys. Oh. <laughs> By three points. <laughs> By three. Way to go, way to go. Ah, well. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship for those of you who are here, but also for those who are worshiping with us online. Uh, one of the ways to connect with us not only is through YouTube, but especially for those of you online, if you go to our website, foxriverchurch.org, very simple. You can learn about the church, uh, know what the calendar is, but also send any prayer requests or concerns you have. There's a lot of exciting things going on in the life of our church. First, following the benediction, after you get your donut for mission, uh, we're wanting to gather in the fellowship room because there's gonna be a presentation by Nancy Ferguson, who's, who's leading and facilitating our exploration into how we're gonna possibly be using the new facility for a school. You have responded, there's been a great response on the surveys, and so she's gonna share what we're hearing and to talk about different kinds of options on how we can uh, increase our output and our service to the community through that facility. So we want to encourage you to participate in that conversation. And next Sunday, it's a big Sunday because we have Michael Penny. Remember Michael who was here with his friend during uh, Grill and Chill. He will be in worship doing one of the songs that he just wrote. You could, you could hear it on, actually it's on the radio now. Uh, he will be here in worship doing a song, but we're launching a, a gathering of our youth in the church. This is for grade six and up. We're having a pizza party. Uh, Michael's going to be doing some music, but he's also going to be sharing about what it's like to, uh, uh, to, to play music and to perform and to do that as a Christ follower. And we're going to be having some discussions with our youth on the direction for youth ministry and just getting some ideas about that and how we will be able to expand the youth ministry in our new building. So we, we hope you'll, uh, especially those of you who have children, bring them here for that service as well. Three weeks from today, uh, there will be an opportunity to learn about this church. You've been possibly attending for some time and you wonder, what's that church all about? Or what is a congregational Christian church? Or how did this church get started? It's an opportunity where I'll facilitate, we'll share our history, we'll, we'll talk a bit about our faith, but if you'd like to learn more about the church, you're not making a commitment to join, you're just wanting to resource some information, we will have that three weeks from today. Following worship, we'll gather somewhere in here and we will have, uh, have a conversation on exploring membership. There will be an opportunity, because I know a number of you have already asked about joining on uh, November 5 will actually be the next Sunday, which we will be receiving members. It's also a communion Sunday. Okay, Mark Smailing, where are you? Mark has an exciting trophy to share. Mark, come on up here, Mark. All right. A big event. Okay. <laughs> he worked hard on this trophy. Come on, Mark. you right here, right here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hold it for you. Sure, okay. hold it. There you go. Chili pot. Is this bigger than yours, Roy? It's about the same size. Okay. And in two weeks, two weeks. Uh, is it two weeks? Yeah. Something on the like 21st, it. on Saturday <laughs> at 3 o'clock, we're going to have a chili cook-off. And the, the thing we're going to do is anybody who's got a great chili recipe is invited to come and show us what you got. Uh, it's going to be in the Grill and Chill uh, headquarters over on the, on the driveway. Um, we want, there's a, there's a sign-up sheet, looks just like this. It's, I, I had it out last week and a couple people have already signed up for it. Um, so we'd like you to sign up. 
We're going to have electrical hook, hookups and everything. So basically bring a crock pot full of chili, enough to, to sample. And then we're, it's going to be a blind, a blind competition. They'll all be numbered. And then we're going to see who has the best chili. So we're going to supply all the, we're going to yeah. supply all the condiments, the uh, what cheese, uh, oyster crackers, anything else you, you can put in, in chili. So it should be a lot of fun. Invite your family, friends. You don't have to be a member. We'd like to see a lot of people here. Um, the last couple ch uh, grill and chills, we had like over 60 people here. So I think it should be a lot of fun. We're, we're adding on to the Great Commission, go into all the world to make chili. Right, right. 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 Okay. Right. So um, if you have any questions about it, there is a little bit of information at the top of the sign-up sheet, which is out there. Um, but if you have any other questions, we'll, we'll just kind of be hyping it up for the next couple weeks. If you, if you do plan on uh, submitting a, 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 a samples, uh, we'd like to know by next Saturday or Sunday, because we need to kind of plan how much of everything to have. So it should be kind of fun. And with that said, if you want to if you want to name your chili, I have, a, I have a couple that I pulled off the internet, which are kind of fun. Tailgate chili, call the, fire, call the fire department chili, spicy sisters, here's kind of one, a taste of heaven, hmm? okay. atomic chili, bite me chili, bowls of steel, <laughs> say your prayers chili, um, Kentucky Fried Chili, Say Your Prayers Chili, and my favorite is Mad Thunder in Your Pants Chili. On that, thank you, Mark. We'll yeah, see yeah. you later. Yeah. Uh, on a more serious note. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Joyce, come on up here. Maybe you're not into chili, but there's two exciting things happening that, uh, that we can do after we eat chili. Joyce. Yes. I don't know how I topped that, Mark. <laughs> but I wanted to let people know um, we have a Bible study that meets at lunchtime. We call ourselves the Brown Baggers. Um, everyone is welcome, and so if you haven't heard of it and you would like to join us, any time. You don't have to worry about, are we starting something? Am I jumping in the middle? We are starting something new tomorrow. Um, we meet on the second and the fourth Mondays of the month. You bring your own lunch about 1130. We fellowship and have lunch and then we dive into the study. The book is called The Twelve Extraordinary Women and we're doing it chapter by chapter because each woman has a chapter. So even if you haven't gotten the book yet, feel free to join in and I've got a copy, anybody can borrow. It's, it's not, um, doesn't take a lot of time. So each one is separated. So if you can make one, two, whatever. But we would love to see you. I did want to mention Carmen's, um, the dinner club event. Um, try to get those reservations and let me know if you're interested so that I can work on the dinner by this week. And the last, but not the least. The Ark Encounter in the Creation Museum. We are looking to see how many people might be interested in taking that, um, it's like a bus tour. The information is out in the narthex that you can take. It looks like this. Take home and read it. We need 30 people to book a tour. So we're just, it's not a commitment right now. Take a look. If you think you might be interested, let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Lots going on. And we let you know that our mission for this month is the food pantry at Pewaukee. So you may have noticed people have been bringing groceries and putting them in the tubs. We want to encourage you to stick around afterwards for, uh, for missions, uh, donuts for missions, and the proceeds of that will go to the Pewaukee uh, Food Pantry. This time, I'd like to invite everyone to stand. Sunday school children and teachers, you're dismissed to go on to Sunday school and let us remain standing as we sing together, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come, 
seats as we pray together. You'll notice we have four prayer quilts on the altar. Uh, we have a prayer quilt for Teresa, who is a friend of Sue and Richard Pershon. Uh, Teresa's husband, Shorty, passed away this last week, and he has been a part of our prayer network, but this quilt is that they might bring to Teresa. We also have a quilt for Marie Gray that she has requested for a dear friend named Donna. Uh, And Marie calls her a precious friend. And she is having some health issues. She's failing in her health. uh, And she asks for our prayers. We also have prayer quilts for Nora and her husband, Adam. Nora is the niece of Carl Hitzman. And Nora's mother, who is the sister of Carl, was killed in an automobile accident last week. And so we have this prayer quilt for for Nora, but also a prayer quilt uh, for the Hitzman family as they work through this time of grief on his sister's passing. Let us spend a few moments that we can offer our prayers for these individuals, but also the silent prayers we have in our hearts for others. Let us pray. O oh God, it is in you that we live and we move. And it is through you that we have our total being and understanding of the prospects of what we may be today, but also our tomorrows are in your hands. For we realize, Lord, that you have blessed us in many ways. You have blessed us with the gift of today, with the gift of this moment, with the gift of life. And you have blessed us with this world to live in. For in you, we are blessed and we offer our praise and thanks. But we'd also pray, Lord, that you would empower and strengthen the witness of your church, not only here, but throughout the world. That true to its calling, it may embody your boundless love. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen all the members of the body of Christ and grant that nourished and sustained by word and sacrament, by faith and freedom and fellowship, our service and witness in this and every land may be full of faith 
and love. We uplift those, Lord, whose names have been presented to receive a prayer quilt. May it be but a symbol of the connection of your care in this world. And we would also uplift Pastor Jackie as she continues her recovery from her automobile accident. May the pain be healed and may she be renewed in spirit and soul as we uplift her before you as well. And Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in the Middle East. May those who govern the nations of this world, Lord, use their authority with wisdom and kindness. And Lord, we pray for peacefulness. Awaken in them a thirst for justice that embodies your care for this earth and for the human community. And we pray, Lord, that you would rescue those who suffer from poverty, from injustice, or oppression when they cry out. Open the ears of our hearts to hear and quicken in us the fire to respond in your gracious love. Grant comfort, healing, and release to those who suffer illness or distress or grief. And awaken in us all your boundless compassion and use us as agents of your loving kindness. For it is in your love and compassion to hear the prayers of your people and enliven us by your spirit to live into the fullness of your reign. Hear us, Lord, as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time, let us continue our worship as we receive the offering. Ushers, would you please come forward?
Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we can join together and to participate together in an answer, in an answer to the torments of the times in which we live and be a part of a community of faith that provides a message of hope. May these gifts, but also the resources of time and talent, be dedicated to your Lordship. May we be able to be difference makers for you and your kingdom as we give following the example of how you loved us first, that you gave yourself for us. In the name of Jesus, we would pray. Amen. Please take your seats. Well, good morning. Good morning, Marie. I'm so happy to see everybody here. Um, If I may, uh, before I begin reading today's lesson, I'd like to give thanks to all the teams and ministries, especially the technology staff, for enriching our worship services here at Fox River Congregational Church. We are so blessed by your works in encouraging us to grow more deeply and spiritually in God's grace and love. So thank you and let us to continue to offer up our prayers. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Thank you, Marie. I really should say Reverend Dr. Marie Gray. It's good having you with us to to help out in all that you do. Well, this is not the sermon, okay? But it's an important part of worship, and I didn't know where would be the best place to talk about what I need to talk about. And I came to the conclusion, we need to do it now. As you may know, we um, are either victims of circumstance or we are creators of circumstance. And whenever a church or an organization engages in any kind of planning or strategic planning, it is an opportunity to create the prospects for tomorrow. And that's what we are about as a church. And that's what growing a disciple-making church is all about. For we are engaged in in an important and significant uh, evaluation of our mission and ministry and how that's going to look in the future. We are actually what I call the fourth configuration of Fox River Church. The first was at the movie theater. And then after a few years, when we moved to this building and we could get out of, a, out of a dark room, but we could see light and have windows around us, we became another kind of a church when we moved into this building. And there was a third configuration of the church when COVID came. We wondered, what will the church be like? What, what does this mean about our future? And we worked through that, and by the grace of God, God blessed us in that, 
And now we had a point now where, where we're going to be able to complement the mission and ministry through the building addition and what that brings. It's a place for Christian learning and fellowship. So we're in configuration 4.0 of the church. And because we have so many new people, you may not know the kinds of history that we have gone through as a church to try to do it right and not be a church that would be an embarrassment but to take the words of Jesus very clearly and try to live them out. We want to do it right. And so we wanted to pause, and this would be the time to do it, just to give you an update so you, you know where we have been, so you have an idea as to why we are choosing to go in the direction we have now as a church. Well, back in 2003, long time ago, 20 years ago, this congregation spent several months reading and acting upon a 164-page document that was titled Building for the Future of Our Church, and that was facilitated by John Hansen. We were new. We felt God wanted to do a new thing in this community. There was a lot of churches here, even, even the Pewaukee Planning Commission, they didn't want another church here. They said, we have too many churches. Why do we need any others? And, but we know that we are all different. We all have different flavors. And we felt there was a place for this kind of church that, where the fullness of the local church could be expressed in one body. And the church was built. But from that study, we spent several months. And from that, uh, it contributed to how this church was organized. That work was revised again. And then most recently, in 2018, John completed an extensive draft, updating his previous work, reflecting on things that's worked in our history and things that has not worked. He's brilliant at that. And then from that, there was a task force that was set up to review 700 plus pages of the document. I'd like to call upon just the members of the task force so you know who's been working many, many years on this. Uh, I was a part of it. Uh, Reverend Dr. Artie Johnson was a part of it. Artie now lives in Hurley. She was at all the meetings through, through Zoom and online. Uh, Randy Johnson, is Randy here? I don't see Randy. Uh, we have uh, Mary Beth Miranda. Mary Beth, you come stand up, Mary Beth. Come on, stand up. But anyway, you've been a part of this. Uh, Barbara Zeiser. Barbara Zeiser, I mean, these folks spent probably 100 plus hours. Barbara, on and off uh, from, from Naples. She was always with us online. And then, of course, this guy, John Hansen. Stand up, John. Come on. Can we just say thank you to these people who, I mean, everyone has been, you are fantastic. You take your seat now. Unless, John, did you want to say something? Okay, all right, all right. So thank, thank you for granting me this time just to be informed because you, you need to know that what goes on here isn't just some fluke but has been a part of, 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 of waiting for God and God's inspiration and reflecting and trying to do, do good, important analytical work. So uh, the task force kind of completed their work uh, in the first quarter, uh, or, or I should say by December of 2019, and then what happened in the first quarter of 2020? COVID. What? All this work. So, all of those hours, all of that work, all of that editing, all of that reflecting, all of that praying was shelved. Okay? It was just put aside put aside. And uh, it's time though now for us as a church to take it off the shelf. Uh, report, an extensive report was uh, created. That is a report of the task force to the congregation. And we're going to be distributing that. But I, I don't want you to think of of a 700-page document as anything. It's daunting. The 700 pages, it essentially is a resource book to help people find tools to help them grow in their faith and serve. 
All of these documents will be on our website. Just to give you some information, first of all, um, we have three things to be a part of as a congregation now as we look at what does God want to do in this church in its next, uh, its next organization, if you will. In other words, what is our task as a church? Has it changed any at all? I, clearly, our, our faith has not changed. Our core values have not changed. But uh, how, what is our task? Do we need to review that. Then also, how do we equip ourselves? Are there some things that we need to be a part of now that was not a part of our ministries in the past? How do we equip ourselves? And then the other one, how will it look? Now, we've been looking at uh, the first one, what is our mission? In the sermon last Sunday, we talked about what is the mission of the church? The mission of the church is the great commission of how Jesus commissioned it. Later on today in this worship, we'll be looking at, you know, uh, at how do we equip ourselves for mission, the stages of discipleship. I want to walk us through that in the sermon. And then next week, we will be looking at how will it look? How will we know if we are being faithful and effective to the gospel? Well, uh, there will be an email that will be going out on the 16th of October. Everyone here will be receiving a 700-page PDF document, okay? It's there. It will also be on the website. You also will be given the synopsis, the executive summary uh, in a report, and it's the report to the congregation that has some action items on, on our organization. We realized we were organized when we had a handful of people 22 years ago, but it's a different church now, and we need to share some of those things. So kind of reviewing that, that structure and that organization. And uh, then on beginning on the 18th of October, 18th, 19th, and 22nd, there's going to be uh, small group gatherings where you can sign up for and be a part of a small group so you have an opportunity to share your ideas, see what you think. There are just some ideas from the task force, but as a congregation, we need to say, what do we want this to look like as we engage in a church in the future? Then there will be two congregational meetings. Uh, one will be in November and the other in January of next year to where whatever we decide on as a church will be decided upon at those congregational meetings. It is a truly an exciting, exciting time. And I just want to thank those of the task force, but also those of you as a congregation who've been a part of our history, helping getting us where we are today. At this time, I'd like to call upon Carmen, who uh, is going to sing a song that is kind of reflective of where we want to go now as a church, and it's titled Press Forward.
Amen. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Carmen. Ah, well. How do others know that you are a Christian? How, how do people know that? What will be your identity if you claim as one of your values to be a Christ follower? What's the symbol? That's an interesting subject to look at historically, because historically one of the earliest symbols of the Christ follower was a fish. Now the reason a fish was used, for a number of reasons, first of all, early Christianity was illegal. So you had to watch yourself. And so the fish became the symbol of the Christ follower. And it was also reflective of Jesus' uh, parable, his story, when he said, I want to make you fishers of men and women. Go fishing for the catch. And I'm sure Peter and the other professional fishermen uh, understood that. So the fish was the symbol. But that symbol took on some other characteristics. Scholars, are, they know it was in, within the first century. Some are even wondering if it had uh, occurred the, another version of this shortly after the resurrection of Jesus. And it is taking the fish symbol and creating what's known as an ichthus. Okay? Ichthus, that's the Greek word for fish. Okay? And if you take those five letters of the Greek alphabet, and it's actually an acrostic version that each of those five words in the Greek would be Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. But you put the first letter of each of those Greek words together, and it's the word ichthus, which is fish. A remarkable symbol. A remarkable symbol. The fish can be seen in many, many forms. Well, that's had an interesting history. Let's put that into practice today on how people will know if we are Christ followers. I got this cartoon the other day, and I said, you know, that's so in tune with where I'd like to go with this. I wanted to share the cartoon with you, okay? Uh, this is Carl. Carl's on the left, and Carl, he owns a landscaping company. And he goes to church, he's active in church, and he wants to make sure that everyone who he does business with knows that he's a Christ follower. And so in this cartoon, he turns to Jesus. And he says, should I add a little fish symbol? Okay, think this. To the corner of my landscaping company's logo. Should I do that, Jesus? And here's Jesus' response. To what end, Carl? Why would you want to do that? And Carl says this. Carl says, well, obviously, so people will know they're dealing with a Christian company. Just, and then I like how the response goes. It goes like this. Jesus says, let's leave it off. And see if they can figure that out by your workmanship, your work ethic, and honesty instead. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? You know, it's okay if you want to put bumper stickers and put a Nick Thuce and a fish. That, it, it, but the real mark, the real win, the real thing that makes a difference is exactly what Jesus, oh, kind of leave it all. See if they can figure it out. Maybe if you have to tell someone you are, there might be a question about it. But if the reflection of how life is lived, 
or how a business is driven or how relationships are nurtured or how you care for those you love, your children, your spouse, if it's done in a way that is done with good ethics and honestly, then perhaps it could be reflective that God must be doing something in that person's life. Dealing with that symbol is something I'd like to introduce you to that is unique to only this church. And a copy of this will be in the resource book. There will be a copy of the report to the congregation. But we also made a bunch of copies of this and they're out in the lobby. It um, is a symbol of our walk with Christ. And if the objective is that people will know that we are Christians, what is the strategy or the steps that we would want to take as a community of faith, looking at the stages of Christian discipleship? And from this graphic, it's how we like for our church to be organized. Now think of it this way. At, at, at the very beginning here, you know, our walk with Christ we, you know, we, we, we want the marks of Christian discipleship. If the go is to go all the way up here, the go is to be fully devoted followers of Christ. That's what we, we hope people will know and how they see. How do we get from, from beginning to here? And there's first, there's areas of relationships. We realize it's important to connect with God. So in the lower area here, we connect with God. And one of the ways we do that, and you find this also referenced in the resource book we created, we, we connect with God by, by, by worshiping. Uh, you know, conversions, we make that decision. I want to be a part there. I want to go. I want to see what that's about. I want to believe that. Then we worship. Then there's the basics of the faith. And then we talk about spiritual disciplines. What are the classic spiritual disciplines that I can learn and be a part of all that's included in the resource book that we've created? Then possibly church membership, but you don't have to join a church to be a Christian. There's probably more Christians who aren't in churches than there are in churches. Some have made that analysis, but we think church is important. It's Jesus' way. He said he wants us to gather together. So you, you, you connect, you learn a little bit, you may be a part of the church, but then you go from connecting with God to connecting with others, others who share your values, who share those kinds of things. And so we talk about assimilation and then the importance of small groups. There's a number of small groups that meet here. Many of you don't know because these groups have been meeting for a number of years. They've just gotten so close. They, they get together regularly. They, they share. We have, have groups that meet in homes. We even have a, a, a group that meets at the nice Ash Cigar Bar in downtown Waukesha called the Holy Smoke. Everything, you know, just so you know, but it's a small group. And so you, you connect with God, you connect with others, but then the critical point, you got to get up here because growing in serving others and sharing the faith. Now, what's important to note and to do at this juncture, especially if you're doing any strategic planning, is to define the when. What does it mean when I know I've won the deal? I've made it happen. Now, if you have a whole lot of people attending worship on a Sunday morning, is that it? No, to me, having a lot of people in your building is not the win. We, there's all kinds of things you can do to manipulate and bring a crowd in. But our objective is not just to have a crowd in worship. It's good when people are here. But the issue is not just to be here, but to grow here. That, the win, is to actually get to this point. So what we're hoping, when we look at our walk with Christ, we will define the win of being fully devoted followers of Christ. I want to encourage you to um, take a copy of this. Read it, reflect upon it, and as you chart out what might be some steps you can take to where you can grow in your faith, in your walk with Christ, towards being a fully devoted follower of Christ, where are you in the condemnation? Are there some things that you're not participating in or involved in that might help you 
to do that. Well, how about the Apostle Paul in the reading this morning? He was very honest with his adventure and his journey. He said, not that I've already obtained it. You know, he's not ever hit all the way there, but he's on his way. He says, or I have not been made perfect, but I press hold to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. I would hope that you would reflect upon where you are in that, that walk with Christ today. And pray about how your church, as we enter into, a, I think, a whole new era of mission and ministry, how we will be able to strategize and become a church that realizes the win is not how many people show up on Sunday morning, but how many people have gone over the top. We've had some enormous wins in our church, quite frankly. We've had some enormous wins when we think of Pastor Nancy, Pastor Jackie, Pastor Barry. They all, as second career people, went into ordained ministry from this church. They had no idea when they visited for the first time that God had something else for them. That, that was a win. There's a great win here from the standpoint of those who are part of the Stephen Ministry Program. The number of persons who's gone through the extensive training to be a Stephen minister. We've also had some remarkable wins, I believe, when we think of lay ministry, those who have participated in the statewide lay ministry program. And I'm pleased to announce that Eddie King, who had gone through that program, uh, is now, he's actually entering into lay preaching now because there's some churches that are without a pastor and he's doing supply work now, coming from this church, sharing the good news of the gospel. So we won't be seeing Eddie all the time, but he's going to be helping a, a new church start. But that's part of the ministry here. But then we also think of, uh, of our children and that wonderful video last week where we heard of uh, the children being excited about the role of the church and how the church has been critical to them all their life. It's a big win with music. It's a big win with those who serve on the various teams. It's an enormous win how you have been so generous and kind to allow this next manifestation of the church to happen as we, we build a new building that will give us more opportunities to serve and to share the good news of the gospel with others. I'd like to conclude with, with one simple story that visually the image of it is, is, is staunting. And it was a number of years ago, there, it was headlines read of how 300 whales 300 whales died. And what happened, these whales, they were pursuing sardines. Whale, sardine. And the sardines, they outwitted the whales because the sardines went into a bay and all of the whales, 300 of them, were marooned and died because they were going after insignificant sardines. And I like how the news commentator, how he wrote about the incident. Here's what the, what the news commentator said. He said, the small fish lured the sea giants to their death. They came to their violent demise by chasing small ends, by prostituting vast powers for insignificant goes. Wow. It is a win because we take what we are about seriously. That's a significant goal. It's a win because we're not sure what the future holds other than we know it's going to be good because God is with us. And it is a significant go 
that God has allowed us to meet this day and to realize that we are in his hands. Let us pray. Lord, we, we want to do this right. May there be a symbol of who we are and our identity as Christians. May it be more than a cross we may have around our neck or, or a bumper sticker, or we, we may stick a symbol of a fish. But may everything that we are a part of in our families, our local community, our nation, our world, realize that we are a different bunch. There's something good about what we are a part of, and it reflects the gracious love that we have come to know through the redemptive work of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Let us sing our concluding hymn together. Just as I am, how one be from that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. I am really glad we do not have to be interviewed by God as to whether or not we're good enough to come to church. Isn't it nice? He just says, y'all come. So we come as we are. But when we hear the gospel, we can't leave the same because there's something better that God has for us each day. And embrace that, know that, treasure that. Um, just as we are, we come. And may his spirit shape us into that which he would have us to be. And in doing so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord just continue to lift up his countenance upon us all. And God's people were amazed. And they lived a life where they didn't have to 
carry a banner. They didn't have to wave a sign or a flag. Just everyone knew they had a different story. And there was something about them that was the answer. And God's people did say, Amen. Amen.